yesterday. It was just downpouring, like it wouldn't stop. It was like monsoon rains and flooded yeah. cars, cars half floating away. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, it is Vancouver, which we nickname Raincouver because it is. Mm -hmm. um, but we are closing in on the shortest day of the year and we should be so thankful that it's just rain and not snow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but with rainy weather and when it's chilly outside, we really crave soup all the time. And soup noodles. And soup noodles. So today we are making a simple miso ramen, not like my two day recipe here, but which is amazing by the way. Mm, so but good. this is for just easy, decent miso broth that can be done in, I want to say half an hour, but we'll see how it goes. Starting off with half an onion that I'm going to cut into dice. Minced, minced garlic. Garlic? <laughs> minced onion. I have, in case I wasn't clear, I have half an onion chopped and I am mincing two cloves of garlic with my garlic press. Once I took a cooking class and the instructor asked us, how do you, how do you mince your garlic? Do you mince it with a knife? Do you use a garlic press? Do you chop it like this or like that? And everyone put up their hand uh, when it came to the way that they, the method that they used. And the chef said, you know, it doesn't really matter, right? People aren't gonna say, uh, did you mince the garlic by knife or use a garlic press? <laughs> and I'm like, that's so true. I'm using a garlic press from now on. Why should I like chop up garlic all the time? There's no glory in that. So, Trying to measure the size of this garlic. So it's like, you know, size of a thumb. <laughs> size of a swollen thumb. And I'm just going to grate this. And again, if you don't have a grater, you want to chop it up with a knife, by all means do that. I just find it's easier this way to get it into small pieces and not like chunks. I don't like having chunks of gar or chunks of ginger in my food. Okay, turning the saute mode on. Uh, we're gonna adjust it to high or more. I'll wait for that to heat up. It's hot. Yay. I'm so impatient. Tablespoon of oil. Just vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever you want to use. Maybe not olive oil, because olive oil will add a flavor to it. And we're going to add onions and garlic and ginger. All right, after you've stirred it around for a couple of minutes, you're going to add one pound of pork. And I'm using a whole pound of pork because this is also going to be the meat in the miso ramen. I am not making chasu or um, the pork belly on the side. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna eat the meat that's in the soup. I'm gonna turn off the saute mode. Sorry, I can't operate this thing backwards still. I think after all this time, I can figure it out by now. We're adding one tablespoon of soybean paste. I want to show you what it looks like because there's no English on here and it's in Korean and I don't read Korean either. So there is some English because there has to be some English if it's being sold here. It's called soybean paste. And I think you can get like a spicy version and just the regular plain version. I have the plain one. Um, you can probably figure out in the ingredients whether it's spicy or not, but this is what I'm using. I'm using a tablespoon of this, and it looks like that. It kind of looks like a miso paste, but it's Korean. Tablespoon. 
And then I'm using a quarter cup of each. So a quarter cup of white miso and a quarter cup of red miso. And I keep these in my freezer with a piece of um, parchment paper pressed around it and that will prevent it from getting freezer burned and even though it's been in the freezer, it doesn't really freeze, which is great, but it'll make it last longer. So a quarter cup, I know it's not a level quarter cup, but because I also know there's a lot of air in there, if you press it down, it'll be a quarter cup. I believe you. Yeah, you know, me and my estimation. Mm -hmm. And a quarter cup of the red. I'm just gonna stir this into the pork mixture that's in here. All right, so I've mixed this around until it, all the miso has melted into the meat. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of sake. And sake is a Japanese wine, I think. So two tablespoons of this. I'm using four cups of chicken broth and I would normally use eight cups but because I only have one pack left I'm using water for the other four cups. Use what you got right? Well, yep. So because I have so much meat in here I'm not worried about not getting enough flavor from the water I'm using instead of chicken broth. But if you have eight cups of chicken broth use that. All right. Okay, locking the lid into place, putting the sealing knob, making sure it's on sealing. And we are just going to manual or pressure cook for 10 minutes. And while this is cooking, prepare the rest of your ingredients. All right, so it took a little bit more than half an hour because it took a little bit more time to come to pressure because there's so much liquid in there, but it's about 40 minutes, I think. So in the meantime, I was able to prepare the rest of my ingredients. Let's check out the soup. Oh, it looks so yummy. Oh, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. Yep, smells super yummy. Okay. So this package of ramen um, is a product of Japan and it will say ramen noodles on there. There are so many different types of Japanese noodles. What I love about Japanese packaging is that they just package everything in like a serving. So that is a serving for one. Bean sprouts, I just blanched for a minute. I have this dried seaweed that we will add and it will be rehydrated by the soup. Some butter corn, some ramen eggs, and I used my sous vide device, the Juul, to make them. They're eight minutes at, I think, 194 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can find the video. Yes, we did a Juul versus Instant Pot uh, soft boiled egg experiment to see which one was best. Some chopped green onions and I have some roasted sesame seeds. I purchased them like that. I didn't roast them myself. So we're going to add all those ingredients into the bowl for the taste. All right, I already cut my egg in half. So that's what it looks like. A little bit fudgy on the outside, still runny on the inside. And we're going to add some bean sprouts, a little bit of seaweed, Some corn, some green onions, and some sesame seeds. And now the soup. You remember I had a lot of pork in that soup, so that pork is going into the noodles as well. All right, and there you go. Are you ready for the taste? Hey, before I start, check out the reanimated. Oh, sorry, that's a zombie. 
uh, type of uh, terminology. Look at the rehydrated seaweed. Uh, sometimes I like using the like the pre-packaged nori that's in the squares and then dip it mm. in there too. That's that's nice too. It's gonna be tough. Oh, oh my goodness. It's Hmm, it's really good. It still has that depth of flavor, the miso mm -hmm. and the, the meat that you put in there. I mean, it's no chashu for sure, but for like a quick same, meal. for a quick meal, I mean, mm -hmm. this is, is awesome. So I'm gonna get some noodles in there. Oh, I'm just gonna put it in my mouth. Some corn, some seaweed. Try not to burn my tongue. Mm. I think that given the time, the cook time of uh, the soup and what goes into it, how fast it, it takes to prepare, I can't expect that, that depth of umami. Could we make it a little bit more salty? Salty? Oh, so you're, you're finding that it's not salty enough? Personal taste. Huh, interesting. Because I added a lot of miso paste, which is quite salty in itself. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't taste it before you did the taste, obviously. Right. Um, but yes, I did not add any salt, mm -hmm. but definitely add salt as needed. Mm -hmm. And if you want it to be spicier, you can either use chili um, chili flakes or um, white chili. pepper. Ground white pepper gives it heat without the chili flavor. Yeah. And you can use that uh, the red chili powder that the the they serve up at uh, the ramen yeah, restaurants can, yeah, as well. Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, so it, it, yeah. personal taste, uh, yeah. but as a base, nice, rich flavors, really fast, and all the other parts that give it the nice texture, so I can't wait to get into this. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Nice mm, thank you. All right, so another simple recipe that you can have during the week it's not in my cookbook, but if you haven't picked up a copy, there's some great recipes in there. It will also be a great gift for Christmas, and you can buy that on Amazon. In the meantime, if you want to check out my two-day miso ramen post, it's down there. And please subscribe to my channel, share this video. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.